what's going on ladies and gentlemen, Noisy Boy here and I'm back with some more Bloodborne Ligarius Wheel walkthrough where we go through every single boss with the Ligarius Wheel smashing them into dust but before we get started guys if you are liking this series so if I remember to like my shit, subscribe to my shit and if you're new to the channel feel free to subscribe because I'd love to hear your feedback and your comments in the comment section below. We are at the Grand Cathedral. We're going to make our way over to the Vacuous Spider Rom, but before we do, I actually thought that this would probably be a good time to unlock a very, very good farming spot in the Lecture Hall. Now, to get there, you're going to need the Tonsil Stone, which is just the stone you grab when you talk to any of the NPCs. It doesn't matter which one it is, and it doesn't have to be a particular order. I should actually probably bring up the description version, shouldn't I? Let's have a look here. Tonsil stone, deformed rock. A latest deformed rock, or perhaps meteorite, appears useless but possesses some odd gravitational force that present, prevents its ridden, riddance. A, a dubious soul once said, Step lightly around the right of the cathedral and seek an ancient shrouded church. The gift of the Godhead will grant you strength. So, pretty much what this actually does is keeps you grounded, in other words, when. Oh, you know what, I won't give it away, you will see. Anyway, you need that tonsil stone um, to actually achieve what we're about to go and do. <coughs> um, we are actually going to, like I said previously, unlock a farming spot. Now this farming spot I will only do off camera, but it is actually very, very good. Now the reason why it's very good is because you can actually get a lot of echoes and bullets. But be aware, coming down this side, there are actually two hunters down here and a sack man. I think he's just around there somewhere, but we're going to avoid all of them altogether. There's no point in taking them on at this part in time. And it does nothing for the walkthrough. Yeah, I could spend five, six minutes fighting two hunters, but at the same time, that's not what I wanted to achieve. I have all my weapons, I have my armor that I want to use through the walkthrough. All I have to do now is work up my level and arm uh, and weapons and uh, think about secondary weapons and all that kind of stuff so there's actually one right there uh, I can't remember where the other one is I think there's one down there too hiding around the corner and um, yeah but anyway we're gonna skip all them all together you can fight them if you want to you want to test your steel but like I said before I'd have to spend the next five six seven minutes fighting all three of them and I just can't be fucked to tell you the truth but where we are actually going oh wrong button so there's one right there I think he has the um, rifle spear and Ludwig's rifle as well but we're going to actually this spot at this point in time of the game if you want to do a quick five or six levels to level up is a good spot to go and do so just lead you around here all quietly there's going to be another one of these sack dudes up here you can fight them with just skip them all together as well but we know all about these sack guys be aware though that when you fight a Ron which we're going to later on he he is holding such a secret that it actually shit starts to get weird after we fight Rom so he's not happy chappy Gives us some bloodstone shards, which is pretty good for now. So you pretty much want to drop off these bits here. There's actually a couple of riflemen. A couple of those little scrambler beasts down here too. But they're all a ploy to get you caught. Twin shards right there as well. There's actually a couple of execu executioner knights and a couple of riflemen down here too, so they're pretty much trying to bait you in to try to get the um, scrambler beasts when you don't really need them. They're only got like, I think one of them has bloodstone shards, the other one has twin shards, and I think it's only one of each. Don't quote me on it, I could be wrong, but again, like I said before, they're there to just bait you to get your ass killed, because What's going to happen is that you're going to see those scramblers run after them, and then while you're trying to fend off these executioner guys, you're being shot at by those two guys up on the ledge too, so... You can try and get them if you want, I'm not going to for, um, time's sakes. I just don't think we need to worry about it, there are other places where we can get it done. As you can see, those dudes pack a fucking punch. 
I'm gonna head into this room here, head off to the lead, left, I think there's a lead. Yeah, lead elixirs. Again, if you really want to go out and get them, you can. I'm not gonna bother with it. I think we're sitting pretty sitting pretty good where we are. Now this is a, the big oval room. Now this is where the tonsil stone comes in handy. We are here a bit early. We're supposed to go through that door right there. But we are just a little bit early. But, if you guys remember from the DLC, we've been handpicked again by one of these motherfuckers. <laughs> Oh, Amygdala. Oh, Amygdala. <laughs> Have mercy on the poor bastard. <laughs> and we'll be dealing with that prick in a bit later, too. <laughs> Not that big dude, the actual voice. And here we are at the lecture building. I probably should have um, actually realized something, actually explained something before that. If you guys have played Dark Souls, you probably know who Patches is. Little prick. Switch on some lanterns so you can see a bit of light. Let me know if it's too dark, I don't actually know. Watching some of my boys, um, Sly Guy and a Hitman, they are... Uh, sometimes it gets a bit dark in their stream, so hopefully the mine's not too dark. <laughs> what a joy it is to behold the Divine. It must be such a pleasure. You're in my debt, you know. You're nigh on a beast of the field. But here you are, treading a measure with the gods. <laughs> We will deal with that guy in a bit later. He does have a rune that is actually very, very good. We actually need to unlock this door. That is where the magic starts. But before we do that, we have to quickly make our way around. So I'll go through this as quick as I can. Um, the only reason why I'm putting this and the Rom boss fight together is just... Rom doesn't take very long at all, especially against the wheel. The wheel is powerful. The wheel is good. Um, so I wasn't sure how long doing this and doing ROM would take, so I thought, well, why not I just put them together and just make it into one video. Of course, this is a walkthrough. I'm not going to show you every single little thing, but at the same time, unlocking things like this will help you in your journey to greatness. You come across these guys, some of the actual people who are actually training, and they are actually in a dream, currently previously, or whatever time, here now then, they are actually in a dream right now. Now the lecture key theatre is the key to the lecture theatre in the lecture building. Today the two-story lecture building is adrift in the nightmare, but once it was a place of reflection where scholars learned the history and archaeology. Perhaps still as the students of the lecture theatre appear to await the return of their professor. So like I said before, this is part of the nightmare, this is their own nightmare, and um... And they've been suffering this nightmare for a very long time, so it's just one of those ones where uh, the hunter's nightmare or the hunter's dream is just one version of many. And you can just go on for ages about the lore, but I'm not going to get bore you guys into it. So if you have looked at misty smoke on the that door back there, very very interesting that that's there. There's actually two different places you can go. This is actually the first floor of the lecture building and there's actually a second floor as well so that actually takes you to a different place. I think the top takes you to the Nightmare of Mentis and the bottom takes you to the Nightmare Frontier so two different spots and two different levels. Pretty good stuff. Um, you know I, I love all that kind of lorry shit so Okay, so we have to go around. I thought we could just open it straight from here, but we've got some visitors. Now, if you've got the moon runes and the eye runes and all that kind of shit that help you um, boost item discovery and boost your um, blood echoes, you can put it on and come here. As you can see, without nothing on there, doing uh, 702 blood echoes per kill, and there is a lot of them in here, guys, so just need to be aware of that. And just doing that is, you know, quite good. I think there are other enemies in here that are worth a little bit more. Um, but there is no shit, probably about 12 or 15 of them in here. So at 702 standard blood echoes, that's actually quite good. I think, I can't quite remember, I think when I took a dummy player through, I was getting about 1700 blood echoes per, per person. Oh no, 1200, sorry. 1200 echoes per per kill, so, you know, 1200 times 12 or 15, oh man, and and you can do that within minutes. I think I've actually put it on my channel as 
one of my mid-game farming spots, so... Actually, mid to early game, probably, but... Yeah, it's a very good spot to um, farm some souls if you're looking for a quick uh, five or six levels to go up. It comes in freaking handy. Alright, and that's pretty much it. They all come from this room here, and I think I started with the... Uh, well, as you can see there, I've got 14,000 so, um, blood echoes already, so... Jeez, look at just look at that. That's just one alone, and... Oh my god, anyway. Let's start nerding out a bit here. So we'll pick up this um, chest here as well, and you get the Augur of Ebriatus, so... Let's have a quick look at that. It's for you arcane dudes out there. Partially summon Ebriatus. Remnant of the Eldritch Truth encountered by Bergenworth. Use phantasms and invertebrates known to be the Orgor of the Great Ones and to partially summon abandoned Ebriatus. The initial encounter marked the start of the inquiry into the cosmos from within the old labyrinth and led to the establishment of the choir. So these guys actually believe that signaling the cosmos and the Great Ones from Earth would actually grant them divinity. And it didn't, because they didn't get it right. But the choir kind of stumbled along something accidentally. And they're actually like a... another part of the healing church that broke away, so... Anyway, there's the Hunter's Lantern there, and if you just, like, bolt Hunter's Market there, and come back, and they reset the enemy, so... Stock up, um... Usually on a run like this, the first time you come here, if you go back to the dream, you just stock up on Bolt Hunter's Marks. And then you just keep repeating, keep coming back, you know, it's really, really good, so... You know, put on these moon runes and all that kind of shit, you know... If you have them or if not, but... That's pretty much it, guys. It's, it's an easy little spot and it's right next to the lantern, so... Hopefully this does help, and um... Let me know how you guys went in the comment section as well. Because this is one of my favourite spots to farm, and you get a shit ton of Quicksilver bullets as well. So, let's head on over to, uh... Rom now. Alright guys, here we are, back in Bergenworth, where it all frickin' started and where all the shit started to go wrong. There are a few things around here, a lot of friends, enemies, these, uh, big, uh, what do you call, like, mosquito-looking motherfuckers. As you can see, they pack a bit of a punch. Little bastards. The wheel is so slow, but it, uh, for some reason doesn't actually get them in a stagger point. They seem to just be able to tank through it. Uh, this area isn't very big, guys, so there's not really much we need to do here. Um, I'm not going to go too hard, and I think I might just fight the NPC upstairs and take on Rom. I'll unlock the shortcut first, actually. It's probably a good idea, just in case I die. That motherfucker's fucked up. And have a look at this, guys. There are just canisters and jars and a whole heap of bullshit. Man, this is like a school. But they're filled with eyes. Everything, everywhere. So what uh, Master Willem wanted to do, he actually said that our eyes are not open and that we need to have eyes on the inside or fill my brain with eyes. And I think he must have thought literal about it because, man, look at this. Eyeballs. I don't know where those eyeballs come from, but they are friggin' massive. And got other organs that looks like brains and just plain flesh. Ugh, man. If these guys got it right, man, we just don't know. Next up, you want to just head on over. Well, we're going to go up there in a sec. There is an uh, NPC up there that we have to fight. We'll open up the shortcut here, so it's right next to the lantern as well. So we have two little shortcuts done. Again, I have. I'm not going to explore this entire area. I just really want to get Rom out of the way. Oh man, this guy. Well, this. I think it's a girl, but man, she is got some damage on her. That's for sure. Oh, she's trying to do what I did. Uh, she has some. She's fast and she has um, arcane powers and stuff like that. But it's just her whip takes up so much health and it's got such good reach. But 
the talent of the wheel. And she has the Rosmana, so she's from the choir, I'm guessing. And she has abilities too, so if you guys remember. She's only with four in here, but. Oh man, is she, that's, oh, that's so bullshit. Like. She uses a cane to whip our ass, a cane of all things, and it's like taking off more health than my wheel. But you know, we can stun lock this bitch into submission. Nope. No iframes for you, bitch. Take that. Take that. Like it. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, she is just something else, man. She really is. I know there have like if you have a look on the floor, probably more upstairs, there'll be a there's one there, there's one there. You know, she's actually quite hard. Um I think it's the fact that I can just tank through her abilities, which is probably why I did so well. Um I did pick up that student uniform from the lecture hall and there's some student uniform here as well, so there's just a hunter you can actually summon. Um, but you can actually sell those for quite a um, good amount of um, blood echoes, so it's probably what I'll do off camera. Like I did with the um, doll set. Head on upstairs here, pick up the Lunarium key so we can open up the um, the door where Master Willem is. We have to put down old Mothball here. Where is he? There he is. I love how his tracking is like perfect, you know. I can't see shit. Come on, dude. Get that tracking right. Oh fuck! Thanks. You get the spacing right with this wheel, it's very, very effective. Um, and it staggers like a bitch, so. Don't think there was anything else I had to do. Can't reach that, so. And last but not least, for you arcane users out there, we have the Empty Phantasm Shell. So let's have a look at that. Empty Phantasm Shell has arcane power. Empty invertebrate shell that is said to be a familiar of one of the great ones. The Healing Church has discovered a great variety of invertebrates or phantasms as they are called. Shells with slime still harbor arcane power and can be rubbed on weapons and imbue them with their strength. So it's pretty much just like, um, you know, magic weapon if you're playing of Dark Souls and stuff like that. It just puts an arcane ability on your weapon and gives you extra strength and arcane. So good for you, um, magic arcane users out there. You can start scaling off of magic, so pretty good little stuff. You know, there's a lot of um. I found you know having an arcane build. I found arcane builds to be really hard, not hard, but harder to use in a skill build or a strength build and so on. So, all right, we use the key to open this one here, and look who we have, guys. It's Master Willem himself, the legend, the professor. Provost Willem. Now he is pointing in off a direction of that ledge. Why would he be pointing there? He really wants us to go to the ledge for some reason. I remember when I first played this and I did this and I was like, why is this stupid old man pointing at the ledge? But we're gonna have to end his life and his reign. For the eye rune, which is friggin' fantastic. Let's have a look at that real quick. Marks additional discoveries. A recent symbol left by Carol, runesmith of Bergenworth. A transcription of eyes spoken by left behind great ones, allowing one to make additional discoveries. Eyes and symbolize the great Master Willem sought in his research. Disillusioned by the limits of human intellect, Master Willem looked to beings for, from higher planes for guidance and sought to line his brain with eyes in order to elevate his thoughts. So he literally thought that he had to put eyes on his brain. And if you come across a few enemies like that before and they have thousands of eyes. As you can see, we are down here once again. And he was actually pointing to the ledge. Now, why would he be pointing to the ledge for? 
Well, we were about to see. As you can see, there are other people standing here as well. Like, what the fuck is going on? He pretty much means look over, and then once you do, jump off because there is some shit going on. And we end up at the Moonside Lake, where one of the great ones is actually harboring himself in a different realm, a different plane. But this is one of the great ones, one of the younger great ones. So we're gonna put him down as quick as we can. Now this fight consists of little ads like this where he, um, he uses them to uh, protect himself and all that kind of stuff, but he won't actually um, aggro until you attack him first, but I suggest killing the first round of spiders. Uh, you can go for him if you want, just be aware though that if you attack these little spiders' heads, they will take a minimal amount of damage. Just like that there. So you want to try and get them from the side or the behind. But I do suggest trying to get rid of these spiders first, it just makes this um, fight that much easier. And because the wheel is oozing power, we can actually do a fair bit of damage when no one is protecting him. Which is what I'm going to try and do once I get rid of these guys. Again, if you think you're quick enough or your skills are good, you can actually go straight for him. Um, but once he gets to a certain point, he'll disappear and he'll teleport himself to a different part of the lake. And then spawn more spiders, which is why I suggest actually taking out a spider, especially in this first run here. Oh, you bastard. I didn't expect him to go so early. I thought I could have gotten at least one or two more shots. And as you can see there, he spawned more spiders. Now I just kind of wasted some beast blood pellets for Oh, shit. I didn't realize he could attack me from so far away. This time again, you guys, it's totally up to you if you want to, but... I'm going to try and get in some hit and run tactics. You just have to keep an item at the same time, so... Especially when he starts rolling and shit. That's when you know he's going to hit the shit to try to get you with it. Oh! So we're doing quite well so far. Where did he go? And like I said before, his spiders are not really that... Oh fuck, too far away, too far away. Oh shit. Just out of range. Now you can see that the spies are trying to do more of a bodyguard sequences and all that kind of shit, so. I thought he was coming for me in that one. Oh shit, let me do this. I didn't like that. I think I got him too. Yeah, take that, you bastard. Pre slaughtered. Oh fuck, I pressed the wrong button again. I keep pressing square, not triangle, man, that's gonna like really fuck me up if I don't watch that. And in the distance we see something. A lady. What could be her problem? And what is the significance of her being here? We shall find out right now. The red moon has been activated. What has Ron been hiding this whole time? Oh my god, the ritual secret has been broken and what the hell was that? Alright guys, from here on, shit starts to get really, really weird. We're seeing these big dudes with these limbs and nine fingers on each hand and... Once we come down these steps, we step into a different world. Yahagul, the Unseen Village. Now, I mentioned in a previous video that we will be coming back to this place. It was the Hypogean Jail. Well, this is the outside. Going in. Um, enemies are a lot tougher here. And the sky is like a different color, man. What the hell is going on? For those of you who are confused, Pretty much, uh, Rom was hiding this from the rest of the world. Hiding the fact that there is actually something else going on. And the fact that we actually killed him wasn't exactly the greatest thing we could have done. Because if you guys remember the Hypogean Jail, 
the sky was nice and clear and we had a big pale moon and that did not look like this and now we've got these giant monsters and oh the moon is red so we've pretty much set in motion a massive chain reaction of a fucked up events but we shall continue on with the wheel now remember guys to check out my um, boy Sly Guy and Hitman I'll leave a link in the description below and I will leave the series here for now anyway guys if you're enjoying this remember to like my shit, subscribe to my shit and if you're new feel free to subscribe because I love to hear feedback and your comments in the comment section below I am your esteemed host Noisy Boy thanks for coming on by and as always guys stay noisy